More than 100 members of the armed forces have been recognised in the latest operational honours and awards list. The stories of extraordinary bravery ranged from close combat with the enemy to rescuing Afghan civilians. And the honours included seven military crosses and one Queen's Gallantry Medal. James Banks reports. How do you define bravery? Well, how about being ambushed? Taking a casualty, putting yourself into open ground and suppressing an insurgent firing point, only then to take a bullet to the helmet, which knocks you out. Not convinced? Well, how about getting up from that and carrying on the fight? I didn't feel any pain at the time. I felt a bit dizzy at the start for a few seconds. Um, but apart from that, it was just, you know, it was more of a shock of actually what had just happened, really. You know, But I couldn't think of it at the time, so I just had to crack on. And when he says crack on, he really means dashing 50 metres and engaging the enemy so his injured colleague could be evacuated. Or how about leading an 80-metre bayonet charge with no cover? Tactical cunning and complete disregard for his own safety. The guy, uh, I've seen him, um, traditional white Afghan dress, you know, um, chest rig for his magazines. You know, he wants to, to kill us um, and we need to do something about it. Um, and his mates were trying to do it as well. Colour Sergeant Tony Bramham, the rifles. When Colour Sergeant Bramham and his men came under accurate fire just two weeks into their tour, little did he know that his actions that day would set the conditions for the rest of his time in Helmand. After already revealing his position to entice the enemy, he led his men into a headlong sprint across open ground which he knew was littered with IEDs. I needed, you know, some kind of smoke screen. You no know, smoke won't stop, you know, bullets, but it gives the guys a little warm fuzzy and it obscures us from the enemy so we can punch, you know, to, to what our overall goal was. So the smoke went and then it was a case of, right, fellas, we are off. Give them a direction and through the smoke, you know, and you're almost stars in your eyes tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be as we punch through to get to our, you know, limit of exploitation. And it was us seizing the initiative. His bold and inspirational leadership forced the enemy to withdraw and ended the contact in an area known by those who've served there as the devil's doorstep. It was hearts and minds of the locals. They seen the enemy running away from us. And it, they hadn't seen that, certainly in Sukmanda, in my time there. It then pivoted because within a six weeks, we had the, the locals were starting to engage with us. You know, they were on side. And it made my time, you know, at the devil's doorstep a, a lot easier. But bravery is more than just closing with and engaging the enemy. And in a conflict that is plagued with deadly IEDs, often the most brave are those who go to the rescue of others. Originally we were tasked to do a different job. It was to place some cameras at a vulnerable point. But on, on, while we were doing that job, a civilian minibus carrying civilians, obviously, uh, struck an ID, and then we got retasked to deal with the aftermath of that. The minibus was captured by this BBC News team moments before the deadly explosion that claimed the lives of 18 Afghan civilians. But despite the threat to his own safety and knowing the horrific scenes that awaited him, Sapper Pavey knew what he had to do. It was hard to keep focused on the job you're doing because there was like mass destruction around you and a lot of carnage, I would say. But um, yeah, you had to just keep your head on searching, you know, one, one step at a time. But for those who thought surviving the perils of Helmand was a challenge, perhaps telling their mums the danger they'd been in when they got back was the hardest part. She knew, she knew what I was doing, but I don't think she quite knew the details because I never told her the details. But, um, yeah, everyone's shocked, um, but immensely proud. But, of course, you don't need to be deployed overseas to show real bravery. Winchman Flight Sergeant Niall Hansen was commended for rescuing a submerged kayaker from hazardous rapids. The water was visually judged by the crew to be Class 5 white water with large waves, strong currents and continuous rapids containing rocks and other hazards. The force of the water was such that it just took me straight underneath the water, uh, pinned me to the bottom of the riverbed and kind of wedged me be beneath the casualty at that point, under the water. I mean, at that point, did you think, this, you know, this could be it? Uh, not this could be it, not at all. What I did realise was that it was an unworkable situation. I couldn't control anything. Perhaps what's most striking about this collection of unique and inspirational characters is that in a room bursting with bravery, there is still plenty of space for humbling modesty. I wouldn't call myself a hero, you know. I was just doing my job. You know, I needed to suppress the enemy, and that's what I did, you know. Um, I wouldn't certainly class myself as a hero. I would praise the standard of what my men and the, the men within the company were at to enable us to be as successful as we were. There was another 11 guys on the ground with me. Um, 
you know, they were, did just as much as I did. Um, you know, everyone there plays a part, so hero, I don't, it's not really a thing that I'll really class myself as. But of course, for every story that we've heard here today, there are many, many more tales of heroic acts that remain untold. One thing that they all have in common, however, is that speak to those involved and they'll tell you that they were simply doing their job. James Banks, Forces News, London.